And we welcome you to the Pavilion on the campus of Ole Miss in Oxford, Mississippi, where tonight the Rebels coming in at 1-1 one one in conference play, taking on the LSU Tigers at 2-1 and one in the SEC. Mike Morgan, Mark Wise, great to be with you. The nightcap of a busy day of action in the Southeastern Conference, and we have some updated standings. And lo and behold, it's Alabama and Kentucky leading the way. The Wildcats with a big win over Florida as John Calipari and company making a statement. LSU hoping to make a statement tonight, and if they do so, Mark Wise, it'll be led in large part due to the talented freshman Cam Thomas. Maybe the freshman in the country that more people need to be talking about. Cam Thomas, he is a bucket getter. He's gone for at least 26 points in each of his first three SEC games, but in my view, what sets him apart is his unique ability as a freshman to knock down the step back three. And if this is your first time to watch the freshman sensation, you're in for a treat. Uh, you, real, you really are. I had a treat to watch him light it up in the second half in a overtime win for LSU against Georgia just a few nights ago. As the opening tip is knocked out of bounds and we are underway from Oxford. Mike Morgan residing in Atlanta. Mark Wise back in the home studio in Gainesville and if you're still a little bit baffled by this matchup maybe it said something different on your uh, TV guide of course Ole Miss was supposed to play South Carolina LSU supposed to play Missouri both those teams battling COVID issues so give the SEC Greg Sankey Dan Leibovitz and both these coaches credit on the fly late Thursday early Friday they made the move hey let's just play each other and make up for the game. You see the Farm Rich starting five. Devontae Shore now in his senior campaign leading the way. Romello White, very talented transfer from Arizona State. Right away we see LSU go down the floor with a little 2-2-1 after that offensive foul to open the game on Darius Davis. Thomas, the freshman, joined by some savvy veterans in Smart, Watford, and Days. But really, at times, as you see Days dr drill the triple, at times, Mark, those veterans have deferred to the talented freshman who leads the SEC in scoring, Cam Thomas. And they should at times. Darius Days, Mike, he is on my all-undervalued team in the Southeastern Conference. He does so many things for Will Wade's team. Will Wade says, among other things, he's the best screener on the LSU roster, setting up some of those open looks for guys like Thomas. We've got the top offensive team by most of the metrics in LSU and one of the top defensive teams in the SEC and Ole Miss. Let's see which one prevails. LSU loves to play in the 80s and 90s. Ole Miss not necessarily looking for that high a number. Dangerous pass down low, and it's stolen away by the Rebels. In transition, and a foul called on Days. The Rebels will go to the free throw line. Well, if you're offensively challenged, like Kermit Davis's team can be at times, why not let your defense help out your offense? Good help defense leads, out, leads to the run out. Three on two, I like the fact that the pass was given up at the right time which allows K.J. Buffin to attack the rim. Buffin in his junior year out of Gainesville, Georgia. Seven points, three right rebounds, and a steal in the last game for the Rams. Yeah, he had some two foul difficulties, and so he had to sit in the first half. That broke a string of five in a row in double figures. One of two Rebels to start all 32 games from a year ago. Notice who has the Cam Thomas assignment, Devontae Schuler. Thomas tried to get contact and now goes down and he's holding that right ankle and now everybody on the LSU side holding their breath. Came down awkwardly, tr tried to draw a foul on the jump shot, which he's pretty adept at doing, did not get the whistle and then came down awkwardly. He was going for one of those patented step back threes that I talked about. And as you aptly called, Mike, I remember him kicking his legs out trying to get the whistle. Yeah. He is, I mean, it's, it's a 19 year old, but this is a veteran type of move trying to create contact on the kick out. 
I couldn't tell on that view. Here's the, well, with Thomas out, guess what Kermit Davis goes to? 1-3-1. <laughs> one, one. And that time LSU makes him pay. It's Watford on a three. Will Wade told us earlier today he wanted to put Watford up top because of his size against the 1-3-1. One, one. LSU 36% as a team from downtown. They lead the league in field goal percentage at 49. Quick hands and a steal by Wilkinson. LSU off and running. All the way to the basket. No, but the tip in is good by Wilkinson. Just being athletic, active around the glass. Again, forcing the issue and the mistake. And it's LSU's defense causing havoc. Another turnover. Now this is the tempo LSU wants. No question about it. LSU wants the game in the 80s. Ole Miss would like to keep it in the high 60s. Open three on the way, knocked down. Another triple for Watford. And a timeout called by Kermit Davis and Ole Miss. What a great start for Will Wade's team. He felt like Watford got fouled on that three as well. Who says you need a lot of days of practice to be ready to play, Mike Morgan? <laughs> 8-0 eight, eight -oh run as you watch the last three from Watford. Yeah, I thought I saw contact on Watford's arm, but that rotation was perfect on the step back. As you know, we had a great discussion. Kermit, Kermit Davis, excuse me, Mike, had to take the time out. Absolutely. You know, Mark, we had a great discussion with Will Wade this morning, just kind of asking him to take us through how all this went down. Again, they... They find out on Thursday that their game against Missouri is off. And then you, you figure, okay, well, we might just have the weekend off. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> you get a phone call from the SEC office that says, hey, we, we got an idea. Ole Miss just <laughs> lost their game against South Carolina. And I asked Will Wade point blank, was there any hesitation in your mind to change opponents on that level of notice? He said, absolutely not. We want to play. We're ready to get our games in. I think that's the scouting? way the, Yeah, I think that's the way that the players feel. And that's yeah. the driving force really. Now, LSU, Mike, in, in that conversation with Will Wade, he told us that they do their scouting a little different. It, it's more of a group effort. Whereas a lot of schools and a lot of programs have one assistant assigned to a team. So, if if that was the case, then that would be a difficult transition if you were the assistant who had the Missouri scout, and you were getting ready for Missouri, but you had the Ole Miss scout that's supposed to be played in February. <laughs> You're not quite ready for that one yet. But you know what? It's I'm used to saying it's 2020. Might as well say now it's 2021, and it's still COVID, and it's that's not the last of a scheduling shuffle that we're going to see in the SEC or any other league for that matter. Nine-point lead for the Bayou Bengals. And that's an unforced mistake. Oh, Five-second count on Watford. Watford just <laughs> held it forever. If you, if you get a five-second call anymore, you probably held the ball about eight or nine seconds. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was going to say that's rarely a call in college basketball. You've got to really fall in love with the pumpkin to get it. Now another turnover on Ole Miss. So, again, it's Ole Miss that leads the league in forcing turnovers a game, 19. But LSU has forced three of them thus far. Wilkinson. Over to Gaines. Back up top to Javante Smart, who's been quiet thus far. Let's see if he changes that. He'll shoot that. Inside Days. Good job defensively by Ole Miss. Crowley. Mike Ole Miss needs shots. Just get a shot on goal. And they've only had two, and they missed both of them. And another turnover, a walk and more stifling defense by LSU. 
Cam Thomas still nursing that ankle. Hopefully he'll be okay. All LSU early from Oxford. Eleven two, our score. LSU off to a hot start at the Pavilion in Oxford. As we welcome you inside our humble abode, our home studios, Mike Morgan in Atlanta. We've got Mark Wise back in Gainesville, Florida. And Mark, we we think about Ole Miss and Kermit Davis. We think about that suffocating one three one defense. It's been outstanding so far this season. It's no secret that this Ole Miss t team at times can be really challenged offensively. And if that's the case, Mike, then you need something to fall back on. And for Ole Miss, that's that mixing of the hard-nosed man-to-man and that trademark 1-3-1 Kermit Davis zone. And the numbers speak for themselves. They lead this league in scoring defense. They're second in turnovers forced and turnover margin. First in field goal percentage defense with their outstanding NCAA numbers. So this Ole Miss team really defensively driven, and we have a matchup of really conflicting strengths. LSU offensively minded, Ole Miss That's what I love about the minded. game of basketball. They say style makes fights, and we've got two completely different styles and strengths and weaknesses with these two teams. A little bit uncharacteristic for Ole Miss to serve up an 11-burger in the opening stanza. <laughs> LSU trying to pick up where they left off in that overtime win against Georgia. The number of great offensive performances, including by that guy, Javante Smart. Well, when you talk about LSU offensively and their big four, even if Cam Thomas is out of the game, I mean, they've got Watford, Smart, Days, all double-figure scores. It's going to be an over-the-back foul on Luis Rodriguez, who is crashing. Smart, left-handed dribble off one foot. That's just a really creative finish. The LSU defense, Mike, has just suffocated Ole Miss right now. Well, you know, we asked Will Wade, it was he concerned about the defense. They've been giving up a, a lot of points, even in wins. He said, you know, I, I think we'll be all right if we just do a better rebound, a better job rebounding. He says, I, I think we're gonna be fine defensively. We score a lot of points, so we're going to give up a good amount of points, but it's not as if we're a bad defensive team. Well, the early trend here is that LSU is getting their shots a lot simpler than Ole Miss is. Ole Miss hasn't had a good look yet. They're 0 for 3 from the floor, both points coming on the free throw line. That's a tough shot, and that'll be a foul. Wilkinson crowding the shooter, and to the line will be K.J. Buffett. Yeah, that's a mistake by the freshman Wilkinson. You're making Ole Miss take a tough two off the bounce. No reason to foul there. K.J. Buffett, who has been more aggressive, but he's got to be able to do it without fouling. Of course, I think the biggest question coming in for Ole Miss offensively this year, you lose Brian Tyree, who was a lot of fun to watch, great scorer. He's in Miami now with the Heat. And so you're, you're putting extra pressure on a lot of guys, whether it's Devontae Shuler, K.J. Buffin. You know, you got some new blood there and, and Joyner and Romello White, but Brian Tyree was awfully special. No question about it. Remember the year before that they had Terrence Davis. Right, another guy in the league right now. Strong take off the left hand, no, tapped around, and a great job of being Johnny on the spot by Hadim C. Again, another illustration where Ole Miss's defense can speak sometimes for their offense. Down There's isolation for lead. Wofford. Wofford backing in, goes to work. Shot clock down to seven for Watford. Probing, weaving, and gets it to go on the run. Mike, did you see Watford, though, with his maturity, almost stop on his left foot and avoid the charge? Man, is that a creative move. Really is. I, I see the development in Watford and Javante Smart. They're, they're different players. They were highly touted coming out of high school. They were good last year, but this is different. 
Ole Miss is going to need more of this. The quick hands of Devontae Schuler run the floor, and you big guys always follow along. You never know when you might be the guy getting the offensive putback. And that time it was Hadim C. Ole Miss is 1-3-1, transforms into a 2-3 once the ball goes below the free throw line. Smart pulls the trigger oh. on another three. Oh. Javante Smart has been playing out of his mind. He came in shooting 48% from downtown. Well, his shooting numbers, and especially his three-point percentage, are by far the best in his career. Watch, he just, between defenders, gets enough room. And right now, the LSU offense is smoking. There's so much fun to watch. You know, I mean, last year, too, LSU was going to score on just about anybody. The problem was they didn't stop anybody. This year, they believe they can sure up some of the defense. You see Smart already, seven points, three assists. You remember there was some criticism about Javante early on. A lot of people questioned, well, can he play the point? We know he can score, right. but can he play the point? I think he has turned himself into a more than adequate point guard in addition to a guy who can always give you buckets. He had a year to kind of transition along with Skylar Mays last year. They kind of were point guard by committee, but right now it's Javante Smart's job. But this half-court trap has given Ole Miss fits. Three from the corner. Again, that's not the strength for Ole Miss. 28% from three. That's right near the bottom of the league. I think if you're LSU, Mark, you'll live with that all night. Oh, absolutely. They're forcing the issue. They are forcing tempo. Will Wade has got this game at a pace that he likes right now. Seven minutes into the action. It's been all LSU thus far. Ole Miss trying to find their way on offense. Good block with the rebound for the Tigers. Again, Cam Thomas, if you're wondering where he's been, tweaked his ankle, landing on a jump shot. He's been on the bench ever since. And Ole Miss, or rather LSU, has not missed him a whole lot since. <laughs> How about Cam that? Thomas. If, yeah, if get you on turn the bike. your ankle, you've got to go <laughs> ride the bike? Are you kidding me? Hey, one thing we know about him, too, like you see that look on his face, you don't know if he's in pain. You don't know if he's happy. You don't know if he's mad. He is the most stoic, kind of cold-blooded assassin you will find. Will Wade loves the fact that he's not overly emotional. Shot clock down to four, three from the corner. Again, not Ole Miss's strength. Another three, another miss. And that is Ole Miss's strength. Getting some buckets inside, it's Rodriguez who has really improved after missing most of last year with a broken foot. And that's that op offensive rebounding concern that Will Wade has, not only in this game, but night in and night out. When I asked him today, Will, what does your team need to do better, A, B, C, D, what's A? And he did not hesitate, did he? Not at all. Rebound. Absolutely. He even gave us specific rebounding percentages he wants the opponent to have. And a couple games earlier this year where LSU was to the point where, for example, against Florida, more than half of Florida's misses were rebounded by the Gators. And he talked about 65% being the magical number. They need to get 65% or better of all defensive rebounds. Ole Miss needs to get some buckets. LSU on fire in the early going. 13-point lead for the Tigers. Now Tuesday, got another good one for you. The same Ole Miss Rebel squad you're watching tonight will take on a very angry and determined Florida squad that was humbled a bit at home against Kentucky. That'll be at 7 o'clock Eastern time, 6 Central right here on the SEC Network. Mike Morgan, Mark Wise, and Mark, you and I had a chance to watch some of that game earlier. A little bit surprised just how Kentucky was able to dominate that game from the opening tip. 
Well, Kentucky has won a couple of games, close games, and they've gotten a little bit more confident. They got Keon Brooks back today. And speaking of getting back, Cam Thomas looks like, as you take a look at what he's doing in terms of the, his freshman campaign, still looks like he's limping to me. I, I don't know that we're going to see Cam Thomas, are we? I, I might do anything so I don't have to ride the bike. You have been known to be allergic to cardio. Yes. Oh, look, he's coming back out. You know, when I talked to Will Wade about Cam Thomas, he said he's a special player with special talent, and he gets special rules. What does that mean? That means you other players need to understand that Cam Thomas gets the green light where a lot of you cannot get the same green light. He has that kind of confidence and trust from his head coach. Thomas played all of a minute and 20 seconds before he tweaked the ankle. Back out there on the floor. You see him at the top of your screen in the corner. He won't play a role on this play, however. Strong take to the basket by Eric Gaines, the freshman from Lithonia, Georgia. He's really struggled shooting the basketball. He comes in four for 23, one for 10 from behind the arc. And Will Wade will tell you he's simply a better shooter than that. Just got off to a rough start. Mike, like a lot of freshmen, I, I think Gaines is trying to figure out the college game. And you've heard me talk about this before. I think we've become so workout, individual workout centric, that we've kind of lost concept of playing a lot of five on five pickups. So when freshmen come to the college game, the things that they could do in individual workouts, they don't work five on five. And LSU kind of backs off after the miss. That half-court trap. Sure thought about it. LSU really amping up the defense in this game. Shot clock again under 10 for Ole Miss. Down to five and a walk. Another turnover on Ole Miss. That's six. Again, the worst shot in a possession is better than any turnover. I think Ole Miss is a little gun shy right now. They've got to figure out a way, Mike, to get the fight of this game back into the middle of the ring. Days off the mark, out of bounds to Ole Miss. It's, just, it's interesting to me, and see if you agree, I, I, LSU just looks fresher. They look quicker, they're bouncier. Yeah, and which is not what you would expect. They're the team that was pressed into overtime on Wednesday and had to change their travel itinerary at the last second due to the change in the schedule. So if anything, you would have thought LSU might have come out a little flat in this game. Well, this half-court trap is forcing the ball up the sidelines. Ole Miss needs to think about operating in the middle of the floor. Take a look at the combination of Thomas, Watford, Smart, and Days. They they score 77% of their points. They take 75% of the shots. And their three-point makes, they make almost all of them. And combined, they've got 15 games between the four of them, 20 points or more. That's pretty impressive. That's better than any barbershop quartet. I, mean, I don't know if they can sing, but they're going to give you a lot of production this year in the SEC. And that, of course, you know, includes the veterans and that man, Cam Thomas, who's back out on the floor after tweaking his ankle early on. We'll see if he gets that first shot off without any problems. Nice feed. That's a good way to dissect and get an easy bucket for your big man, Romello White. That's a much better job of attacking the pressure instead of trying to just get it over midcourt. Down low to LeBlanc. Reversal finds an open man, and Eric Gaines, I mentioned he was just one for 10 from three on the season, feeling it tonight. LSU is firing on all cylinders on the offensive end. Six points for Gaines. Long rebound tracked down by the Rebels. How about a three from Schuler? That's a wide open look after the offensive rebound. 
Euro step and a block and a whistle. It did not look pretty for Andre Hyatt. Ole Miss here attacking the pressure. Schuler gets the ball middle of the court, and that leads to the easy deuce by White. But again, Mike, you must live in the th middle third of the floor against any kind of three-quarter, half-court trap. Nice ball movement into the hands of Smart. Might have gotten away with the walk. Cook tries to squeeze it in to Watford, but to no avail. Steal for the Rebels. In the lane, popping out at the last second. Doesn't matter. We got an offensive foul called on Buffin. I thought Doug Shouse was going to call a block, but his battery mate called offensive foul. I thought Buffin angled away from the defender. Now, that doesn't mean it is not a charge, but take another look. There's just not enough there. That's a play on. We, we have way too many charges in our game. If there's a 50-50 opportunity for the officials, call it on the defense. You've got to be, in my view, so convinced that it was a charge. Rebels on the run out. Sure, stop and pop, back iron. Rough start for the senior. Nice save, back into the hands of Shuler. Under eight minutes to go, LSU has controlled this game from the opening tip. And that'll be a walk. Well, some of these turnovers have been forced, some have just been sloppy more. This LSU team, as I mentioned, firing on all cylinders off the bench. Eric Gaines, one for 10 on the season from bonus land, no problem. Two days to the college football playoff national championship game on ESPN. Oh, we can't wait for that. Are, are we going on the record on predictions? You and I both have the uh, Ohio State and Alabama pennants in our backdrop tonight. <laughs> I'll get to mine in the second half. How about okay. that? That's fair. I, I mean, I, I anybody who saw the game Wednesday night, Debbie Antonelli and I on the call, I, I kind of already tipped my hand. I already raised the uh, one particular pennant. There's Cam Thomas going back to the locker room. He gave it a go, but clearly – Still bothered by that ankle injury. Now LSU is going to have to do it perhaps the rest of the way without the top scorer in the SEC. That's 25 points per game limping off the floor. It's not as if they don't have plenty of firepower, however. Days, too strong. And a rebound wrangled up by Ole Miss. This is Crowley drawing the block foul. Nice job of pushing tempo there by Crowley. Mike, one of the unique things about this game, this is a quad one opportunity for both teams. Why? Because LSU's in the top 30, inside the top 30. That makes it a quad one opportunity for Ole Miss. And because Ole Miss is inside the top 75, that makes it a quad one opportunity for LSU. That doesn't happen very often. And you can never, ever start talking about quad one opportunities <laughs> early enough in my world. You know, things are starting to feel normal again. When I hear, when I hear a Mark Wise breaking down the quad one quad two, three, and four net system. I forget about all the troubles that have plagued America. <laughs> Things just feel back to normal again. <laughs> Ole Miss would like to get their offense back to normal. Yes, they would. Now this matchup has just created so much havoc, and they've done it in different ways. They've extended it to three quarters. They've backed it up to midcourt. They've done it on the half court. Ole Miss is going to need a little offensive operation in the locker room at halftime. Ten turnovers on Ole Miss. I, mean, I, I just I didn't see that coming. 
Yeah, they only <laughs> average a little more than 13 a game. Right, and this is a much maligned LSU defense. Tigers up 15 with the ball. Smart on a leaner. Javante Smart, silky smooth. I just love the way he's playing with so much confidence, under control, ranks in the top five in a lot of offensive categories in the Southeastern Conference. And Ole Miss just cannot get to the basket. Another turnover, that's 11. And then Smart gave it back right up. Nice job by Rodriguez, though, to follow the play. Look at those points off turnovers. Already a 10-point differential. Who are we looking for here on the Ole Miss offense? That's a step back three and a tough shot dropped by Jarkel Joyner. That's why they brought him in from Cal State Bakersfield, where he led the whack in scoring. If things are chaotic on your offensive end, and we talk about Cam Thomas being a bucket getter. Ole Miss needs a bucket getter. And I think the most likely candidate, a guy who can take and make bad shots, if you will, is probably Joyner. You want to take a shot at who Cal State Bakersfield mascot is? I'll let you think about that for a second. Oh, tough shot. Flat-footed block, it looked like, on Schuler's offering. Smart oh, leaving, Smart with the reverse. Javante Smart with an incredible first half. 11 points, three assists. He's now five of six from the field. I want you to watch this move that Javante Smart makes. Not only splits defenders, but then sidesteps the third defender. That's broken ankles on three different guys in the same play. <laughs> Javante Smart, LSU having their way right now, especially on the offensive end. Uh, you mentioned it last year, Skylar Mays, who's a, 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 what a great guy to learn from. I mean, incredibly bright, natural born leader. You play it alongside him for a couple of years and I think so often the attention is on Watford when you think of LSU and all the hype around Cam Thomas this year. Javante Smart could be one of the best players in this league and, and put together an All-American type season if you're not careful. But I mean, he has got that kind of ability. He seems to be putting it all together this year. I couldn't agree more. He's playing with so much confidence. I'm, in the last game, he made five three balls against Georgia. Averaging better than 20 in his last two games overall. And, Mike, and let me ask those, you this. Yeah. You, you've, you've covered this league for a lot of years as well. Sure. Yeah. Javante Smart, his hometown, Baton Rouge. When mm -hmm. was the last time LSU didn't have a double figure oh, score from Baton Rouge? From Baton Rouge. You know, I mean, you, you think <laughs> of that Final Four team under John Brady, and you think of Big Baby Davis, and you think of. Uh, All the temples Tyrus that Thomas, played the LSU the over the years. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it just it, so many great players. You know, so many programs will say, if we could just keep our in-state guys <laughs> in our program, we'll be okay. LSU is one of the few programs in America that sometimes you could just say, if we could just put a fence around Baton Rouge, we're going to be all right. There's so many they great recruit, players come out of there. They recruit in Baton Rouge by parish. They keep yeah. their players in their own parish. I tell you what, they don't lose many of them either. Those kids from that area generally wind up on the campus of LSU. Watford handled the point one, three, one easily. And smart, a little loose on the handle that time. Three on two for the Rebels. Can they cash in? They do. Trailer picks it up and banks it home. And that'll make it 30-17. You know, that's the second time now that Ole Miss's bigs have followed the play and just gathered some garbage points. Here you go. Steal. Morrell on the steal. Pop-up jumper off the mark. Watford cradles the rebound.
Under four minutes to play. Next whistle will send us to our final media timeout of the half. Cam Thomas out. That means more minutes for Gaines or Hyatt. Shot clock at six. Deep three off the mark. And yeah, Stein I didn't like that shot. Yeah, I didn't either. Rodriguez. Rodriguez all the way. Rodriguez showing you a little something. And I think, Mike, that's what you were talking about earlier with LSU. So they just take some plays off defensively. No way could a, should a guy like Rodriguez be able to go coast to coast yeah. and score off the bounce. Their problem has been straight line drives. Guys just going straight to the bucket. You don't see the help that you need sometimes. <laughs> no help needed for Trendon Wofford at times. He is a one-man scoring machine. Wadford, smart, days, powerfully built. Under three minutes to go. Urell, talented freshman, making his second start tonight, feeling it. And that time he just made up his mind, I'm going to get a shot off one way or another. He gets the whistle, he'll go to the line when we come back. Fish, that is a very good question. It, it would be scary, quite frankly, and that defense is forced 11 turnovers. They came in, Mark, leading the SEC, shooting 49%. They're shooting 50% in the first half. Well, I think the, the LSU defensive scheme is kind of where they're hanging their DNA right now. And what I mean by that is they're zoning some, they're manning some, they're going down the floor some. Why do you do that? I don't think individually they're probably not great defenders. I say that because if you want to be good defensively, I think you have to have three ingredients. One is team speed. I think LSU's an okay speed team. You've got to have great length. There are some spots they have great length, and then there are others that they don't. And then third, and probably most importantly, you've got to have a rim protector. LSU does not have one of those. They only block a little bit more than two points a game. So I think there's a certain ceiling for this LSU team on the defensive end. Where can they get better defensively, in my opinion? Rebounding. And that usually means guards getting more involved and getting more rebounds. Yeah, that's exactly what Will Wade told us today. What do we have to do better? Number one, defensive rebound. Number two, defensive rebound. Number three, defensive <laughs> rebound. <laughs> and so far, the rebounding tonight, Ole Miss plus three in that category, but that's about the only advantage the Rebels have in this first half. As much as LSU has dominated this first half, though, Mark, you look at the scoreboard, yep. I mean, it's only 11 points. I was just about to say, Mike, that this is an important 2.30 to go in the first frame for Ole Miss. You don't want to give back what you've worked so hard to climb out of this hole. Strong oh. tape, and somehow Watford, in heavy traffic, flips it off the window and in. Yeah, he's become a much more diversified offensive player than a year ago. Will Wade says he's one of the best playmakers in the SEC, and he is that at six foot nine. He's also cut down on his turnovers from a year ago. Shot clock to seven. Again, Ole Miss struggling to find a good look. That's not really one. And that's what I'm talking about. You see the box out there? That time by Hyatt. But LSU was in fundamentally sound position. They put bodies on body. They were not giving Ole Miss a second shot opportunity. Foul on Ole Miss, that's the Rebels' fifth team foul. 
Let's see if the Rebels can close out the first half with a little positive momentum. 1-3-1. One, one. Stop right here. Well. See, as long as the ball stays out front, it's a 1-3-1. One, one. There's the soft spot, that corner, and I think that might have been blocked. Great effort by K.J. Buffin closing out on the shooter. You've got to come up with that loose ball. You work so hard rotating defensively. Got a challenge three. Five on the shot clock. From the baseline into Smart. Fade and fire three. And into the hands of Watford. Now it's one thing to block out, but then you've got to go seek the ball. I didn't see any Ole Miss player jumping, leaving the floor. Be active on the glass. Nice feed inside. And a foul by Buffin, who thought he had himself a swat. Now the SEC Network has got you covered coming up this weekend. And, of course, on Monday before the big playoff championship game, our pregame show starts at 8 a.m. Eastern time. It takes you right up to the kickoff. You can watch the game with the Alabama radio team and then wrap up the day with SEC football final with highlights, interviews, and a complete game breakdown. Here's a good look at Darius Days at the line. You know, he hired a personal trainer over the summer. He got himself in better shape. He's kind of remade his body. And if you didn't know better, you wouldn't even recognize him from last season, I don't think. Yeah. Improved his body, improved his game. And the LSU lead improves to 15. Morrell's got to look to shoot that. That's an open three. You attack the defense. Sure, too strong on a three. So you end up taking a challenge step back three. I think Will Wade's going to use his use it or lose it timeout. Three second differential, game clock to shot clock tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Eastern time right here on the SEC Network. It'll be Nick Saban and Ryan Day's press conferences ahead of the national championship game on Monday night. Alyssa Lang and the coach, Gene Chizik, will lead the SEC now coverage. Mike Morgan, Mark Wise, great to be with you. The nightcap, busy day of Saturday action. How about the road teams today, four and one? Mark, I did a deep dive a week ago because obviously home court advantage is not nearly what it normally would be. You've got 10% capacity tonight at the Pavilion. And because I have no social life, I found out that since 2000, <laughs> home court advantage in college basketball has been in the neighborhood of 68, 69%. I don't think we're gonna come close to that number this year. Yeah, I, it's been really interesting to watch. Uh, there's no question that road teams have had a much higher rate of success than usual. There's a lot of things that are gonna go into the committee's process in my view. Uh, when it comes Selection Sunday, and we'll get into some of those as the game goes along. Three <laughs> bounces out and then in, and LSU has its largest lead of 18. Rebels will play, final shot inside. Buffin stripped, saved by LSU. Good Watch out! It goes from half Watch court, out! And it hits the rim. LSU with a dominating performance in the first half despite having very little of Cam Thomas who hurt his ankle early in this game. 50% from the field and forcing 12 Ole Miss turnovers. LSU on top 39-21 as we send you to the award-winning studio coverage. Well, a dominating first half performance by the SEC's top shooting team, LSU. 49% for the year, 50% tonight. They lead it by 18. As we say hello and welcome again, Mike Morgan, Mark Wise, and Mark Camp Thomas 
The SEC's leading scorer, talented freshman for LSU, he goes down after two minutes with the ankle injury. Ordinarily, that would make you nervous, but no Cam, no problem. You got plenty of Smart and Watford to pick up the slack. Yeah, that duo was simply sensational in the first 20 minutes, and it all started with Trendon Wofford making this three ball on the very first possession of the game. But he was also creative off the bounce. He utilizes that six foot nine frame to get to the paint, to get to the rim and score the really tough points. But he had a lot of help in the first 20 minutes as well. His running mate in the backcourt, Javante Smart, also got in on the act from bonus land, knocking down that three ball. But he also got feet in the paint, scored off the bounce. And when you look at the two and what they brought to the table in the first half against Ole Miss, the numbers just jump out at you. They combined for 23 points, combined 10 for 16 from the field, three of six from deep, and they both played a lot of they minutes. They played awfully well. Ole Miss could not have... Probably a worst half for them. Just two assists in the first half. They shot just 26% from the field and had a turnover bug. That's a good way to get things started in the second half. A three ball from Rodriguez. Well, Rodriguez has kind of been hot and cold with his three-point shooting. Remember this, Mike. He hasn't played a lot of minutes with this three-point line. That's good. Because point. last right. year he only played five games. And that was the first year of the new arc. Which, by the way, I'm in favor of. I, I thought it should have been 22 feet a long time ago. Oh, you've got to make sure that your passes inside are on point. And it's turnover number 14 for the Rebels. A 15 point lead for LSU. Watford goes to work out of the end one. That so is tough strong. to stop. We talked about that. We talked about his creativity for a guy that is six foot nine, 240 pounds. Watch the way he operates down in that high rent district with confidence, with a certain swag. I mean, Wadford smart days. We haven't seen much of Cam Thomas as you talked about. LSU doesn't seem to miss much of a beat offensively. 15 now for Watford, a game high. And again, Watford's on the point of their version of the 1-3-1. You've got to step into your threes. I think Ole Miss is a little gun shy right now. Shot clock down to seven. Now five. Tough shot, bit of a settle. And a group rebound by LSU into the hands of Watford. Just has not been many easy or good oh. looks for the Rebels. Strong take that time by Watford, a runaway locomotive. There's Cam Thomas, the SEC's leading scorer. Tweaked his ankle in the first half and obviously not going to return. Well, right now, if I'm Will Wade, my point guard is Trendon Watford. And he can play the position at 6'9". He is that skilled. You got Smart and you got Watford. Both can play the point position. Buffett now with his third foul. You see the night for Watford, 15-4-1. And we just had a double tech on Watford and Buffin. That's got to be just jawing back and forth while yep. Watford was towing the free throw line. Just too much chatter. There's no reason for that. Now, I, I will say this, and certainly not to justify the tech on either side, but if you're Ole Miss, you can just feel the frustration boiling over, right? I mean, not much has gone right for yep. the Rebs in this game. And Mike, here's the other thing that goes back to the lack of crowd. You can hear more things. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> There's a lot of woofing that goes on that never sees the light of day. But when you're in a building that at, at capacity now, 
under COVID regulations, it's 10% in the state of Mississippi. So that's about 1,000 at the pavilion. And you can hear just about everything. So what do you do if you're Kermit Davis? What's your message to the team right now? My message would be try to win a segment. There are no 10-point plays in basketball. Try to win one four-minute segment. Largest lead for LSU, 18 minutes to play. Rebels trying to find some continuity, some flow on offense. That'll help. That's one of the few times they've been able to get Romello White a touch. That, that zone, that trap, the mixture of the two of those has really negated any kind of flow from Romello White in this game. White initially from Atlanta, a prize transfer from Arizona State, and then LSU responds right back with a three ball from Days. LSU with every answer right now. See, White is, again, if the passer doesn't see you, then don't just keep waving your arms. Go to a different spot, much like Morrell did, drifting to the corner. Highest ranked recruit in Ole Miss history, Matthew Morrell, with some high expectations coming into this year. He's got five. And LSU with a turnover. Mike, this is what I'm talking about, moving without the basketball. On this last possession by Ole Miss, keep your eye on Matthew Morrell, who drifts to the corner. That's where the open spot was. So it doesn't matter if you think you're open. You've got to go to a spot that the passer knows you're open. Ole Miss knows a thing or two about seeing zone defenses and 1-3-1 defenses. I mean, they practice it quite a bit. Had trouble finding the sweet spot on the floor tonight, though, and another giveaway. Just remember, though, that it's the first team who practices the defensive side. So it's usually the second team who gets all the reps against the 1-3-1. One, one. <laughs> Tough shot by Smart, and that'll be out of bounds to Ole Miss. Now what could help Ole Miss and Kermit Davis here in the second frame is if LSU's shot selection gets shaky. Sure. Inside. Wheeling and dealing. Not a bad move, but a missed shot by White. Yeah, much better possession. You can live with that. It's a rare paint touch for Ole Miss tonight. They've been living on the perimeter. Watford draws a double. Kick out to Days. And Watford got his hands on it. Numbers for LSU, alley-oop, and there's the slam for Wilkinson. Now that is just beautiful in terms of sharing the basketball. Sure thought about it. 6'9", Watford, right in eye's range. Shot clock at one. Oh, just a bad possession. This LSU team, not only have they been dynamite on defense, but on the break, there's a rule of thumb. Give it up, give it back. That's exactly what they did. The easy flush for Wilkinson. And the Tigers are rolling on the road. Uh, the name Kermit Davis is no stranger to LSU fans. He was an assistant coach in Baton Rouge for five years, going back from 1997 to 2002. That, of course, of course, the John Brady years, part of a Sweet 16 team before he eventually defected to become the head coach at Middle Tennessee State. <clears throat> Some good years, Mark, for Kermit Davis as an assistant coach. He still has fond memories at his at, for his time at LSU. I hope 
Kermit Davis forgives us for digging up some of those photos. Oh, that's a dapper-looking, handsome man. The hair has thinned a little bit, and it's going to thin even more <laughs> because his team has really struggled in terms of scoring. But you're talking about a guy that is one of three active coaches to be named Coach of the Year in four different conferences. There's a catch to that. He did it at just three schools. So how can you be just at three schools but be Coach of the Year in four different leagues? Because Middle Tennessee went from Conference USA to the Sun Belt, and he was Coach of the Year in both of those. That's right. Also at Idaho. And coach of the Year in the Big Sky Conference back in 1989 and 1990. And, of course, his first year at Ole Miss, the SEC Coach of the Year. And I was one of the guys... Uh, Kind of politicking for that. I thought he did an outstanding job in year number one. Ole Miss had kind of hit some hard times. There were very little expectations, and he took him to the NCAA tournament. Last year was a tough year. I don't think there's any mystery to that. And now this year, the question becomes, how do they bounce back from a disappointing 2020? How do they do in 2021? Mike, I think one of the struggles and one of the challenges for Ole Miss a year ago was close games. In games decided by five points or less, they were 1-6, 0-5 in, oh in, in league games. And Kermit Davis has made no bones about it that the game at Dayton, the home game against Wichita State, they had opportunities to win both of those games down the stretch. This is an Ole Miss team that needs to learn how to win close games. Lining up and knocking down to three is Sammy Hunter. First time we've called... His name tonight, the 6'9 sophomore from Nassau, Bahamas. Now, Ole Miss looks like they just settled back into a straight 2-3. Well, for anybody coming in off the bench for Ole Miss right now, if you make shots, you're going to play it. And yeah, they're trying to find a spark somewhere. No question. Foul the backcourt on LSU. That'll go against LeBlanc. I think the same rule applies now for Ole Miss. Try to win one segment. See, everybody wants to catch and dribble. Just catch and step into the play. Schuler did just that. Missed it off the front iron. Been a quiet night for Schuler. 0 for 6 from the field. LSU getting another layup from Watford. Again, great movement without the ball. But a sweet find by Javante Smart. I mean, when you think about Watford and Smart, and of course a healthy Cam Thomas, we're talking about three guys who, when it's all said and done, might be on that all-SEC team at the end of the year, and they can go to any one of them in any particular moment. Well, here's Those the thing about getters. playing. I think playing LSU, you have to be willing to win the game in the 80s. Both of the games that they have lost this season, St. Louis had 85, Florida had 83. I, I just don't think you're going to tempo this team. Uh, they're too good offensively. Yeah, and nobody's really been able to slow them down this year and most of last year, quite frankly. Telegraph pass that time. Stolen by Crowley in traffic. What a block by Wilkinson. And then a steal by LSU. On the break to Smart. Beautiful transition bucket for the Tigers. And that'll tie their largest lead. If you want to win on the road, one of the things that you have to do, win the 50-50 balls. Great effort by LSU. Our men's basketball matchup for Tuesday. It's the Florida Gators playing host to this Ole Miss squad at the O-Dome. That'll be at 7 o'clock Eastern time, 6 Central, right here on the SEC Network. Mike Morgan, Mark Wise, 
coming to you from Atlanta and Gainesville. Of course, the game taking place at the beautiful Pavilion, one of my favorite venues, Mark, in the SEC. I, I think what Auburn and Ole Miss has done with those relatively new uh, arenas in the conference, the perfect size, the perfect feel, very well orchestrated and engineered. I am a huge fan of the Pavilion, especially that concourse area where you can get all kinds of food during the day. You don't have to wait for the game, man. You can walk in and get you a burger. That's a good deal. Ole Miss trying to get something cooking here on the court. That'll help. Little alley-oop pass out of the timeout. C on the finish. Again, the way this game came to fruition, LSU was going to play Missouri. Ole Miss was going to play South Carolina. Mizzou and Carolina each had COVID issues, had to back out. And kudos to Dan Leibovitz, Greg Sankey, everybody at the SEC office, and these two programs finding a way to get these two together to play a game in short order. And so far, everything has gone uh, smoothly, especially for LSU, the team that had to change their travel plans. Obviously, that's not affected them tonight. Are you kidding me? Will Wade wants to play Monday now. Yeah. <laughs> See if we can get a doubleheader lined up. Timeout on the floor, 11.28 to go. LSU up big. Two days to the college football playoff national championship game on ESPN. Fifty-five thirty-six is our score with 11.28 to go. LSU looking awfully impressive thus far. Of course, two teams that have looked impressive on the gridiron have been Alabama and Ohio State. Mark Wise with yours truly, Mike Morgan. Great to be with you this Saturday night. And, Mark, I know you're like me and most of the people watching. You love some college football. I'm going to put you on the spot right now. Who are you taking? Mike, remember this. When in doubt, go with the team that has the best player. So I'm going with this guy, the Heisman winner, and I'm picking Alabama. But it's going to be closer than people think. I think Bama scores late and wins 48-38. Just for the record, this is not a heart attack being suffered by Mark Wise. That is the, that's your Heisman pose? Is that, is that what that was? That's the best I, I got, man. That's the best I got. I, I'm also going with Alabama. All due respect to Ohio State, but unless they have Jimmy Chitwood, they're in trouble because not only is Devontae Smith the best wide receiver, they've got the best quarterback, they've got the best running back, they've got the best offensive line. All due respect to Ohio State, love what they did against Clemson. That was impressive. But I think you're going to see another roll tide. I, if my math is correct. That would be six national titles in 12 years. So you're saying it's not going to be close? Oh, I'm not saying that. I just, I, I just well, don't Well, you just see said they were going to roll. Roll as in win, not roll as in route. <laughs> I want to be clear on that in case uh, Vegas is listening. No, I, I think Ohio State has a good combination that they can throw at Alabama to make the game very competitive. I, I just don't see Alabama not scoring on maybe more than one drive. They, they have the most unstoppable offense since LSU a year ago. They defensively, I think they've sured that up. And I don't know if Justin Fields can be out of his mind two games in a row the way he did against Clemson where he was so impressive. Well, that's my take, and I'm sticking to it. Yeah, I don't think there's any question that he's going to have to play well. But that's when one of the challenges for Alabama, hasn't it been? Mobile quarterbacks? It has. It, it certainly has, and he is definitely mobile. But I really think, I, I just don't think Ohio State's defense, as good as they were against Clemson, I don't see them stopping Alabama. No one's been able to stop Ole Miss, excuse me, LSU this year. Jump ball that time and the possession arrow in favor of LSU. Yeah, just too many dribbles, dribbling into traffic. Now, you were talking about LSU in the 80s and even the two games they lost they get to that mark. 
they're just so hard to stop. I mean, they don't have to rely on one or two guys. They don't have to rely on threes, although they hit them. Right. They, they get offensive rebounds. They get steals to produce easy buckets in transition. They get bounces like that. <laughs> I mean, they're just a tough unit to stop. Well, I will say this. I am a big believer in big guards. And when you have guys like Smart at six foot four, Cam Thomas is six foot four. Watford is, for all intents and purposes, is a guard at six foot seven. So they have size galore in the backcourt. And they're doing all of this, mind you, without the leading scorer in the league, Cam Thomas, who, in case you just joined us, hurt his ankle just two minutes into the action, tried to give it a go, and then quickly had to go back out. And hopefully he'll be okay and be ready to go there for the next game coming up in a few days. You and I will have LSU next week against South Carolina, who hopefully will be ready to get back on the hardwood. They've really been struck by COVID issues. The mystery team. I think South Carolina right now is the mystery team. Well, they looked so good in the SEC opener against A&M. Right. I think you and I were anxious to see what they would do for an encore, but we're going to have to wait a little bit longer. A.J. Lawson. They have a lot of known pieces. A.J. Lawson mm -hmm. had that big game with 30 in that win. Kuznard running the point. But they've had some guys out as well. And now, who knows when we'll get to see them. Hopefully next Saturday. LSU just dissecting Ole Miss defensively. That was LeBlanc and a nice feed inside. Pick your poison right now, defending LSU. Where Schuler has really struggled. This is as rough a night as we've seen Devontae Schuler have in four years in Oxford. 0 for 8 from the field. No points in 24 minutes. And remember, he had 28 in this game last year right. against LSU where he made five three balls, set a new career high with scoring. But it has been a struggle for Schuler and the rest of his teammates tonight. If you didn't appreciate how good Brian Tyree was before, I think watching Ole Miss now, you realize just how much more difficult it is to get a good shot without that kind of weapon on the floor. Crossover, Euro, everything but the bucket. And Schuler will draw the foul. Well, maybe this can get Schuler going. We've talked so much tonight, Mike, about Trendon Wofford and Javante Smart and Darius Days. The three of them, all three of them, are shooting this year in the 50s. Did they become better shooters overnight or from one year to the next? I don't think that's the case. I think you become a better shooter, not that you make more shots. It's that you eliminate the bad ones and you miss fewer shots. There's no question they have elevated the quality and the quantity. Sure, in the scoring column with a pair of free throws. Drawing the foul, Javante Smart. It just seems like Smart and Watford have gotten really in this game whatever they wanted. Well, the SEC Network has Alabama covered on Monday before the college football playoff championship game. Our pregame show starts at 8 a.m. Eastern time. And take you right up to kickoff and watch the game with the Alabama radio team and then wrap things up with SEC football final. All the highlights, interviews, and a complete game breakdown when it's all said and done. That Alabama radio team, of course, led by Eli Gold, who had a bout with COVID himself. He is back. Kudos to Chris Stewart, by the way, longtime radio guy at Tuscaloosa, filling in late in the regular season, did his usual bang-up job. 
with some are great radio saying, announcers in this league. Are you saying you did not like my Heisman pose? <laughs> I'm saying I was I was genuinely concerned. I was going to have to make that a phone you, that call. I might have that I might have pulled a muscle. <laughs> yes. I was going to call a paramedic over there in Gainesville. And send you over to Shan's Hospital. Get your work done. <laughs> Under eight minutes to go, and the shot clock is down to five. Time for Smart to put on some magic here. And that will not get it done. Huh? I thought it was a shot clock violation. Instead, it'll be Ole Miss basketball. and fire three on the way and knock down. I think Morrell is capable of more. I know he struggled 25%. He fired blanks against Auburn midweek, missed all six of his shots. But I think he's capable of giving them a lift offensively. They could certainly use a lift tonight with 7.16 to go. LSU, LSU up by 19. Let us take a look at our protection spotlight brought to you by Allstate. Rule of thumb on the break, give the ball up, you'll get it back. Crafty finish between Gaines and Wilkinson, and Wilkinson with the easy two-handed flush after the turnover. Take a look at LSU's well, schedule. We talked with what went into this game, but Mark, like a lot of teams, have had to make a lot of adjustments on the fly. Yeah, well, let's have a little fun with how it started and how it's going. The original LSU schedule starting on November 25th was to play it in Lincoln, Nebraska against San Francisco, Western Kentucky, and St. Louis. That got scratched. They moved to St. Louis and picked up SIUE. They had a pop-up game against Southeastern Louisiana. The La Tech game stayed the same, and then they also lost the USF game in that doubleheader in Atlanta picking up Sam Houston State right before the Christmas holiday. By the way, that St. Louis team led by Coach Travis Ford, 7-1. and one. That's not a team to take lightly out of the Atlantic 10 Conference. There is the boot on the ankle of Cam Thomas. Well, St. Louis is old and good, and this year old and good wins. Yeah, I would say even more so than usual, right, because of the lack of a coordinated offseason. College players might get better in practice. Through this COVID environment, they've had less practice and, more specifically, less games, so less opportunities to get better. So that's why the older teams have had an advantage in my view. LSU certainly has some quality veterans that have already played significant games and minutes. I mean, Watford's a sophomore, but was a huge part of their success last year as a freshman. Smart's a junior. You've got complimentary player, Darius Day is a junior, of course, we talked about earlier. They're not the deepest team in the SEC, but when you take those top five, six guys, they're awfully good. Well, they 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 need are looking to get Sharif O'Neal back maybe in another week. Mm -hmm. We haven't talked about him, but Hyatt has gotten a lot of minutes tonight. Jalen Cook's gotten some minutes. Eric Gaines has gotten some minutes. And I think this is our first look at Demencio Vaughn, the transfer from Ryder who's just had a hard time, I think, finding minutes right now. Yeah, he's, I mean, coming out of Ryder, he was considered a really good grad transfer shooter, but the shots have not been dropping for him, and thus his minutes have suffered. Six and a half minutes to play from Oxford. Been all LSU tonight. Out of bounds to LSU. That was produced by the hustle of Darius Days. Mike, when Watford or Smart drive to the basket and miss, I almost feel like that's news. Yeah. <laughs> well, when they miss a shot, it feels like news. 
And again, they came in number one in field goal percentage, and if they keep hitting shots like that, they're going to leave Oxford number one. Andre Hyatt with the neat little finish off the window. He hasn't played a lot of minutes lately. Number one in field goal percentage, number one in free throw percentage, one of the top scoring teams. And tonight, you've seen a lot of that. Their defense has created a lot of offense. LSU steal total on a per game average, as we see Hyatt make another basket, has been really good. It's their field goal percentage defense that has suffered. It's their rebounding number that has suffered. But in terms of steals per game, there are more than nine in each contest. Yeah, which is a certainly a great number. You can live with that. But they haven't given up the, the easy baskets that we've seen in previous games, the straight line drives, and the rebounding has been better. Tough shot, but a bad foul. No question, step back, long two, no reason to foul there. Bad angle will put Vaughn back to the free throw line. Well, we, we talked about this at the top. Let's see how it's played out, okay? LSU number one in field goal percentage, they're, they're right there. Ole Miss number one in defensive field percentage, obviously not good. 10% higher than what they've normally surrendered. Ordinarily, Ole Miss forces nearly 19 turnovers a game. They've only forced 11. Thomas, obviously, that's, a, that's off the boards because he went out with the ankle injury after two minutes. Otherwise, who knows what his numbers would be tonight. But LSU, the unstoppable force, was better than the immovable object being Ole Miss's <laughs> defense tonight. You like well, I that? just thought, yeah, I thought LSU came across the ring at the beginning and they put Ole Miss on their heels against the ropes, and really, Ole Miss has never gotten away from that. No. No, this was uh, a couple of haymakers thrown early in the first round. Ole Miss kind of got wobbly and really never seemed to recover. Here's a good look at Trendon Walker. Played around with the NBA draft before returning. Well, whoever gets them, presumably after this year in the NBA, they're getting a better player. They're getting a more skilled, more all-around good player. Yeah, I think it's a really good point. He only shot 27% from the arc a year ago. He doesn't shoot a lot of three balls. And, and at the next level, at six foot nine, You've got to be able to make threes, period. Yep. You also got to be able to handle the ball, and he's been much better doing that as well. His assist to turnover ratio went from in the red to nearly two to one in the black this year. He's got his fifth game of the year with 20 or more points, Watford does. It's almost like Joyner is thinking, is this a good shot or not? Mm -hmm. At CSU Bakersfield, he was a volume shooter. So he's trying to figure out exactly what does Kermit Davis want? I can't think of a better time in this broadcast, Mark Wise, to throw a little trivia at you. Oh, here you we go. You mentioned Joyner went to Cal State Bakersfield of WAC fame. What's the mascot for Cal State Bakersfield? Uh, let me think about this. Their colors are rather powder blue. <laughs> um, See, that's next level. I didn't know that. Uh, okay, you've got me. Somebody send out a Go Roadrunners t-shirt to oh, the that's address right, of that's the right. Mark Wise family. That's right. I'll wear it. Oh. If you send it, I'll wear it. <laughs> I'm trying I to get no you some. Shame. Yes, trying to get you some Cal State Bakersfield swag by the end of the night. LSU is going to leave the court tonight with plenty of swagger. Up by 20, and they've been lead, leading by double digits for nearly the entire game. 3:46 to go. All LSU from the pavilion. Well, 
later tonight. SEC now. With the cast of characters that they usually have. So we'll look forward to that as we're here in Oxford. Where tonight it has been all LSU really from the get-go. Jumped on top really early. Led 11-2. to two, Have had their way. They've been the better team. They had forced the issue, forced tempo early with a lot of defense. And as a consequence, they have been able to have their way on a game that didn't even exist 48 hours ago. Trendon Wofford, Javante Smart have been outstanding. And if you're late in terms of joining us, Cam Thomas tweaked his ankle in the first two minutes of this game, attempting a three-point shot. But it has not slowed down LSU in the least. Ole Miss back to the free throw line. This time Jarkel Joyner. Excellent at the free throw line, 90% shooter. I can't hear you, Mark, but hopefully you can hear me. I do hear you, Mike. Now LSU trying to improve to eight and two overall, three and one in league play. They've got a big week coming up against Arkansas in the midweek and then against South Carolina next Saturday, both those games at home. A little too quick out of the corner there on the travel. Under three minutes to go. LSU just trying to put the finishing touches on an impressive road win. After a, those? an overtime victory against the Georgia Bulldogs. There's an add one for Ole Miss. At those points Mark, I can't turnovers. hear you, but I will tell you. <laughs> everything that we thought LSU was offensively coming in has lived up to the billing. Uh, but defensively, I think they have exceeded expectations. Especially in the first 10 minutes. They set the tempo. They set the tone of how the game was going to be played. They did not allow Ole Miss to get any quality looks, to get into any kind of flow on the offensive end. Vaughn with the free throw to make it a 15-point game. And now some full court pressure by Ole Miss forces a turnover. Rebels. Rims off, offensive rebound for Vaughn. Another attempt rims off. A good opportunity there to make things interesting for Ole Miss, but they can't convert. Now Ole Miss trying to make the game chaotic. Well, LSU will bleed some clock here, up by 15. Only fitting that Javante Smart would have it. Defers and sets up an open three for Eric Gaines. How about that? Eric Gaines, Gaines came into the game only knocking down one from bonus land. He's made two on the road here in Oxford. Should do a load of confidence for Eric Gaines with nine points tonight. Foul on the floor against LSU as Adeem C hits the deck. Our 
Zaxby's player of the game is Trendon Watford. 21 points, six rebounds, two assists tonight. Just continues to improve year by year, game by game. Yeah, that shooting percentage was a lot better when this game was still being decided. He gives you a little bit of everything, but a guy six foot nine that you can have confidence in in giving him the ball, and he'll orchestrate and run your offense. Quite the luxury for Will Wade to have two guys, Watford and Smart, who can both handle the ball and make good decisions. Ole Miss making things interesting with a three off a steal. And then a foul on the other end. Eric Gaines with a new career high. Now Mark, you want, to, you want to finish this game as cleanly as possible. You, you've played a terrific game for the better part of 38 and a half minutes. You don't want to get sloppy at the end, right? Mike, that sounds good in theory. But all teams, when they build a league, they take the foot off the gas. It's only natural. The other team makes a, a, a run at you, even though the outcome of this is not in doubt. Here's what gives a little fuel to the coach for practice the, the next time. Free throw makes it a 14-point lead for LSU. You don't want to pick up your pass dribble. And a steal. Pick up your dribble right after going past midcourt into the double team. That's a no-no. Nice feed and an easy bucket down low for days. That's Wofford taking advantage of that size to just throw over the defense and find days. Oh, Ole Miss with a three on the other end. Austin Crowley, Crowley from downtown. Again, he's a guy who's really struggled at the arc. Just three of 16 entering this game. This Ole Miss team just needs, Mike, a little shot in the arm offensively. So any kind of momentum that they can use to close out this game might help them in their next game when they go on the road to Florida. Smart now with 16 points on the night. You look at the upcoming schedule for Ole Miss, it, it doesn't get a lot easier. At Florida, you know they're going to be fired up after a tough loss to Kentucky tonight at home. Georgia eventually is going to start biting people. That's still a dangerous team, but right now Tom Crean's squad still looking for their first conference win. And how about Mississippi State? Three and one in the league. Remember this, Mississippi State is one possession away in that game against Kentucky, the double overtime loss, of being 4-0 and in the league. And with 39.5, it will remain LSU basketball. I know that was some great analysis, Mark. I, if I heard it, I would be complimenting and praising <laughs> you right now. We apologize again for some technical audio issues here in the final few minutes. LSU getting it into days. <laughs> Again, LSU, LSU has really gotten sloppy here in the last minute. This will make the video tomorrow. Desperate three, tapped around, LSU has it. And a foul with 28.8 seconds left. Mike, we looked at Ole Miss's schedule. Here's LSU's upcoming schedule. And notice that their next three are all at home starting with Arkansas. And I, I'm going to go out on a limb and say it will take more than 85 points to win that game. 
You know, Mark, I'll just say one thing about Alabama, and again, it's hard to know what you just added. But with all the talk about LSU and its defense, people wondered if Alabama, how their defense would be. They have picked it up. Offense is awfully good. Coach Oates has got one heck of a team right now at 4-0 in the SEC. LSU is making a statement on just how good they are. Back-to-back -back wins. This one did not come easy. Again, they just found out their opponent about 48 hours ago. Had to divert their trip. They wind up with a big road win over Ole Miss. Your final score, LSU 75, Ole Miss 61. And since I can't hear Mark Wise, I'm going to let you take us out. Well, again, it's a great road win for LSU. Thanks for seeing and being with us.